On this Tuesday's episode of Travel and Young, we're going to talk about cicadas and their invasion of America. We're the Youngs. We've spent our lives traveling the world. And in 2018, we moved from Chicago, Illinois, to Copenhagen, Denmark. Now we want to share with you how our new lives abroad is keeping us young. Keeping us young. Are helping to keep us young. All right, welcome to Traveling Young. And today is Cicada Day. <laughs> so gross. Oh my goodness. So we wanted to talk about this because you may have seen it on the news. Yeah. These cicadas um, are starting to disappear, but they've been in the U.S. now for the last month. Yeah, and it's just quite possibly one of the worst times of, of natural history. <laughs> yeah, and so this specific one is here every 17 years. Yes. And so we were living in Washington, D.C. last time, and Maya was little, um, and it was intense. There's a couple different kinds, um, but this one every 17 years, and this is the area basically around about where they're coming, yeah. like Ohio, Indiana, and Northern Virginia, and Maryland, and that's you know we were, where we... We were the cicada epicenter, we I think, were. the last time. <laughs> yeah, we were. So we want to do a quick walkthrough of what cicadas are, what is their little life cycle that leads to this every 17 year occurrence? Um, some photos from 17 years ago and video from 17 years ago. And then also some stuff from some of my friends that uh, sent us some things. Yeah. And oh. a very special Trot on Tuesday. Very special. Glad very it special. wasn't me. <laughs> but for now, let's start and talk about where cicadas come from. Cicadas are basically around trees. So mm. you see them around trees and these little nymphs come up and burrow out of the ground they climb up a tree this is what they look like and they basically huddle around trees we captured one 17 years ago and watched them a little bit inside we gave them a little tree bark um, but they hang out around trees and one of the first things they do is they go through this molting process so you'll see in the background there's one that had just come out but in the foreground there's one coming out of his shell right now and this is 17 year old video yeah, this is technology here. This was <laughs> back in 2004. This was right outside our window um, of our house. But imagine and, thousands of these. Yeah, and this is the process of them becoming a full adult. Yeah, um, Yeah. exactly. That's super <laughs> awesome. Uh, and you see they're like flying in and, and out they in front. they can't see anything. No, so. so here's some still pictures on a tree outside of one coming out of the shell. Kind of crunchy. A little further out of the shell no. yeah mm. and then here's one that's fully out of his shell no. finished the process and then here you'll see a tree that has some shells some coming out this is just like all over the place yeah. basically all the time and then in the end <laughs> there's just piles of shells, shells on the ground so here they are fully molted now he's gonna fly around and make horrible noises yes um, and fly into you, fly into your hair. Yeah, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> um, they eventually go back to a tree and they cut a slit in the tree and that's where they lay their eggs after yeah. they've mated. So they're flying around making noise, trying to find a, a mate. They get eggs. Um, this is what they look like in that after they've fully gone and when they're flying around. Make this your is eyes. You, you can find like eight or nine of them oh, just sitting on a... That's so on gross. A, Ugh. Ugh. One day we came out 17 years ago and saw these yeah. all over our tire of our car. <laughs> They're absolutely everywhere. But then after they've laid their eggs, they fly around and they die. And smell really bad. So then around, I don't know, six to ten weeks later, um, these eggs hatch and they're little, little nymph, like little small ones, and they fall to the ground, they burrow under the tree, and they basically eat off the roots for 17 yeah. years. And this whole process starts again when they climb out of the ground. So there you go. I mean, that's 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 my non. I'm not a botanist or whatever, an insectologist or whatever would be the. Uh, I can't remember the name of them now. Um, I, so this is the general explanation of this process that they go through, and it's like, I think it's they're disgusting, but it's just fascinating. It is fascinating, but it would be less disgusting if there weren't so many of them i mean it is just thousands upon thousands and when you go outside it is almost deafening yeah. how loud they are yeah when you mow the lawn you're just like oh, mowing up oh it's so 
dead <laughs> shells and carcasses. Yeah, and then our dogs would eat them, and yeah. that was just the worst. Yeah. So speaking of that, let's let let me not give any way too many hints, although you may yeah. figure it out already. Very special tried on Tuesday. Mm. So one of my friends is in the DC area, is super active in charities, and she wanted to raise money for a charity that she's involved in through her work, and. I'm going to let her explain it to you, so let's go to this week's Tried on Tuesday. All right, welcome to this very special Tried on Tuesday with my good friend Sheena, who I have known for, uh, we went to grad school together, we met in 2007, 2008 in the D.C. area, by the way, I've got my nationals, as always, shirt on. Sheena, why don't you uh, give us a quick description of, of what you're up to in the D.C. world? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. I've enjoyed learning so much about Denmark from you. This show is so fun and so cool. I'm honored to be here. Um, so I am in the DC metro area and um, I have a real estate team here and we are mission driven. Um, we have done a lot for our local community and abroad. We help build a shower truck for the homeless. We're drilling wells in Africa. And our latest endeavor is we are looking to build a secondary school in one of the largest slums in Kenya. So yeah, yeah. that's what we're doing. And that's what led to, so, you know, we're friends on Facebook and I saw this incident event. I don't know what to refer to it as. And that's what prompted me to contact you and say, hey, this would be a perfect try it on Tuesday <laughs> um, because I will never try this. So why don't you say what, what this was about and what you were trying to raise money for? Yeah, absolutely. So... So here in this area, Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, every 17 years, there are these bugs that come out of the ground. They're called cicadas. They're very loud. I know you can't hear them right now, but th people thought like they're they're literally all over. I wish I could show you, but um, well, show me the one. You've got one right show there. Yeah. All right. I got a few. You ready? OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's one. Uh. It's not not living. But yeah, they're they're pretty sizable. If you, if you put on my hand so you can see. Um, they're just everywhere. Like they're all over my port. I, I swept up about 50 dead ones yesterday. They're <laughs> literally all over. They fly in your hair. They're not terrible. Like they don't hurt you. They don't bite you, but they're just everywhere. They make a lot of noise. Um, they come, they lay on the ground for 17 years and then they come up and they mate and then they do their thing for two or three weeks and then they, they die. And, and then it happens again in 17 years. So, um, and we're trying to build this school in Kenya. So I was trying to raise money. So I said to my network of folks, I said, um, if we, if you donate, if we get to $5,000 in donations, I will eat a live cicada. So not a dead one, but one that was still, um, you know, still breathing wings, still going. I will eat a live one on Facebook live and we raised $6,400. So it was a like, game on. <laughs> yeah. Then did you regret that? Did you think, oh boy, did I get myself into this is going to happen now? I regretted it once I chomped down on it the first <laughs> moment. Oh my God. I mean, it was still worth it. And the life of the cicada was worth it to build this school, but it was awful. I do not recommend eating cicadas. So like, let's, I'm going to show the video now and just kind of what, what is like that? Like when you were picking this off the tree, what was going through your head? Yeah. You know what? I think really I was picking this tree. I was looking for one. I found one right behind me pretty quickly. Um, looking back, this one was about double the size of the one that was here. I just, oh my God, I just didn't choose carefully. I was really trying to disassociate from what was happening, trying to keep my mind off of it and just said, I just have to chew this thing as quickly as possible. So my kids were all there. You can hear them in the film. Um, and I just threw it in there and I chewed as quickly as I could. Um, did you it, taste anything? Yeah, it was like almost like asparagus. It was a bitter and it was mostly like goo and yeah. then like chips. I would say like Pringles chips. You know, I don't know. If you probably don't have <laughs> it here. It was like, it, so it evolved from like a asp gooey asparagus into like a chip consistency. Yeah, it was oh. like chips kind of chop in there and I started, my husband started to ask in the video, you know, where, how was it? And I started to speak and then I started to gag. I, didn't, I was not expecting that. And everyone kept asking, did you, did you like, did the whole thing come up? And I said, no, but I wish that it had. So, Yeah. So I assume you've just been eating them all the time now since then. Right. I mean, it's a delicacy. Oh yeah. Lunch, dinner, breakfast, syrup. It's awesome. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say what is funny. I have, I have three little kids. One's three years old. And after he saw me eat it, he's like a, he's like a cat. Like he goes outside and he would bring them to me and he's like, here, mama. <laughs> or we're walking. He's like, here, mama, eat this. I'm like, I'm not hungry. And I, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm so glad I'm, I'm missing this this time around because 17 years ago I was living in Virginia and my house felt like it was the epicenter of these things. And I, I never ate one, but you come close to accidentally eating one when they fly in your face and almost in your mouth. But my dogs would just like chomp whenever they could see one, they try and like, stop it, stop it. They probably ate like, you know, 20, but I mean, out of the thousands and thousands in our yard, 20 did not make a dent <laughs> in how many, cause there's so many, but wow, this is a, this is super crazy and a very unique try it on Tuesday because I don't think I'll ever have, I will never eat one. And it's, I, I don't know if I've ever met a person who did it on purpose. So thank you so much for, for coming and sharing and also doing it for charitable reasons is super cool. I'm going to have links below um, for the charity and everything and, and what you're doing. So it's commendable. Is there anything else you want to say before you go have some cicadas for dinner? Oh, you know what? I got so much to do to cook those up and make them taste good. So uh, I appreciate it. I can't wait to see your next episode. I'm appreciating to le learning so much about Denmark. It's fascinating for us Americans. So thank you for sharing. Very cool. Well, we definitely need to get together next time I'm in DC. So I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. See you later. <laughs> Bye. All right. I feel like brisket would have done that Tron on Tuesday mm, no. if you gave him the chance. Mm. I, I'm Horrible. amazed that she did it. It's, uh, she's, as you can't, uh, I'm you can't tell, Sheena is full of energy. And it's just so awesome that she would yeah. do something like that. I commend her. She's, they're just, yeah, she's a fantastic person. Yeah. So thank you, Sheena, <laughs> Sheena, for doing that and for... Thank you for sacrificing yourself for charity. ...joining us for a little bit yes. to talk about the experience. So... Um, what I want to do is play a little bit of audio. My dad, yeah. um, I asked him to record some stuff and he, crazy this is some audio of that. L luckily there's some beautiful birds in the middle of it yeah. because there's still <laughs> birds. My mom told me today, we just spoke that <clears throat> there was a cicada flying around the other day and a bird mid air grabbed it and ate it. That's so like a big dinner. The for birds bird. are super happy, yeah. I think, because they're, they're chowing excited. down on these meaty, um, cicadas. But here's some audio of the cicada noise, which just is this like so very loud. loud buzz that's just constantly going on. And along with that are some pictures that my dad took of the house that we used to live in 17 years ago and basically all the cicadas <laughs> and his own yard because we lived pretty close yeah. to their house. <laughs> One of my good friends, Jen Martin, uh, allowed us to use a video that she took in her backyard. Um, and as you'll see, it's about these trees. They basically, um, because they they eat from the trees, yeah. roots, then they climb up from the trees, they plant their eggs in the trees, they everywhere. do the molting process basically on a vertical surface like a tree. So the trees are like where they're they at. They hang out, well, in the bushes and everything, yeah. yeah. But the tree, the bushes tend to be where the dead ones are. <laughs> But the molting process with the shells yes, the and some dead ones is the, is the trees, are yes. around the trees. So yeah. um, we want to show a little bit of her video um, so you can see what it's like basically just a few days ago. Yes. It's like my grass is just moving. I mean, you guys, I mean, it's, they're just all over. They're just fluttering around all over. I, I really don't even know what to do. Oh my God. One just hit my one just hit my finger. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, this one's like a new molted one. Oh my god! Can you imagine when these things start flying around? We're I mean, my house is like literally ground zero for these freaking things. So that's how it looks. They're they're just everywhere. They're everywhere. You go outside. They're absolutely everywhere. They get on your clothes. They they can't see very well. So they just get everywhere and it's just gross. And your hair. <laughs> and your hair. They fly into your, like, I got one stuck in between my eye and my glasses once. It was horrible. And I'm just so glad that they don't have them here. <laughs> they are not here. Consider yourself lucky. Because like, I mean, this house, there's no air conditioning. We have to have the windows open. Yeah. And so, oh my God, I can't man, imagine. if you had to have the windows open right now and cicadas, they would be inside the house yeah. molting and they'd be inside the house 
making noises and and it would just be the worst so i mean i think it's interesting we do get cicadas every summer there are some cicadas that come out every summer so you get that kind of sound a little bit every summer but then when the big broods come out it's just it's overwhelming and they're just it, the whole being outside nobody wants to be outside yeah this is <laughs> and i remember 17 years ago thinking man I hope I don't have to do this. And uh, we didn't have to. We moved away. <laughs> yeah, no. And the problem is, so this, to mention too, like, because they basically are in the root of trees, newer neighborhoods yeah, that have newer have trees them. and stuff just don't have them as much. I have some friends that live in neighborhoods, uh, houses that have been built in the last 17 years, in which case they, they I guess, would have been killed yeah, or gone in the process. The, you rip up the ground and stuff yeah. when you're doing things but and the, take down trees. And... The house we lived in 17 years ago, didn't, which didn't. is close to my parents' house, there's still trees that yeah. are much older than 17 years. And the house At that time, 30, had... 40, 50 years old. Yeah. And the house had had no work done. Yeah. So they'd just been down there chowing on these roots for years, <laughs> ready to come out. And there was so many there. So that neighborhood that my parents yeah. are in is an old, older neighborhood, which is just like prime I for these cicadas. I think at some point one of our neighbors complained about how just atrocious our yard smell. Yeah, well, we couldn't do anything about it. we couldn't do it. anything. I mean, we literally had tens of thousands of cicadas at our yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> just, so, it was gross. I don't miss it. No. <laughs> so, uh, there you go. This is a little introduction to cicadas. If you want to learn more, uh, feel free to Google. Yeah. And, uh, blah, blah. Yeah. all right. So, um, and my dad told me they're just about starting to go away. So soon they'll be yeah. gone. And then Good for them. in 17 years, you know, in 20... <laughs> Whatever, That'd I don't want to 38. 20, 38, yeah. They'll be, so don't travel to the DC yeah, area in 2038. <laughs> Save it for another summer. <laughs> All right, so if you stay tuned for this Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna basically walk through our trip to Iceland from last yes. summer because we're getting close to, obviously, summer's here. People are taking trips. I'm going to go through day by day exactly where we drove because we had a camper van, and what, what we, we did. did everything with a, a link to the full itinerary yeah. so if you're planning a trip to iceland or thinking about it you'll be able to see footage Such between some trip. drone stuff i did and other things and pictures so hopefully we can give you some good ideas because it was such an amazing yeah. trip. It's the last time we've been on a plane, yeah. which is like a year ago. Oh my gosh, it has um, been. That's and crazy. And it, it was a blast. I, I want to go back, it's but I want to share that experience. And that we did the very first YouTube video we posted was yeah. just like visuals from Iceland. And uh, me this, standing majestically yeah. above a crater. This time we're going to actually talk about it yeah. <laughs> and explain it with maps of where we drove day to day yeah, to day. What we did. And, uh, and it was such an amazing time. I can't wait to share that with you guys and uh, hopefully help people that are thinking about going to Iceland, which I would highly recommend. Yes. But until then, we're just going to go ahead and say goodbye. Bye. We'll see you later.